little babies. That's what my mom says after she's done with you, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> can't make fun of my mom if I set myself up. <laughs> everything, everything is a struggle. Banner 18 is in the building, ladies and gentlemen. The Celtics are uh, officially defending champions. And boy, they looked good, just like us tonight. Uh, unlike Bobby, who uh, clearly did not have a white balance on that camera. I don't know what the fuck mm. is going on there in the uh, <laughs> the old swole room, but he didn't read the email. No, he didn't read the email. Neither did Ray. Fifteen seconds. Uh, yeah, again, it's closer to three. Definitely want to do some Celtics talk. They uh, look the Celtics uh, look good. They're the first team to look to repeat since the Durant Warriors. Uh, this is not a repeatable NBA anymore, or at least the last decade, half decade or so. Uh, more parity in the league, you could say. More stars in the league, but the Celtics look primed to do it in a lot of different ways, starting with their roster, but also led by the one and only Belichickian. Joe Missoula. This show is half to New England sports, half trolling Bobby Vine, and I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it. I've been drinking. <laughs> you said this was your first drink all night. Yeah, I lied. Uh, let's start off with some opening takes. Ray, you're under suspension. Why don't you start, please? Uh, thank you there, Richard. I was going to go the beaties, but I decided to be the bigger man. I'm going to talk about the snip-snapping motherfucker that is in Foxborough. That is Gerard Mayo. How can you go from saying that your team is soft to go to the next press conference on Monday saying, oh, just kidding. It was just that game was soft. You're losing the locker room. Your whole organization is a mess. You only have one man to blame. And it's not Gerard Mayo, the snip-snapper. It's Robert Kraft. You got to get a hold of it because obviously you can't do anything without Bill Belichick running that sideline with his twirling his whistle around, being the man. You need some authority figure down there because you are losing this place and it is going to get very ugly for a very, very long time down there in Gillette. Yeah, real quiet, real quiet after Monday from Gillette, which is interesting. I have some thoughts on that, but I'll scoot over to Bobby's favorite guy, Joey Maz, Joe Missoula, with some just a week in a week's time had a year's worth of best of uh, sound clips from this guy. Uh, and he's exactly what this team needs. It's a, he's exactly what new England needs right now. In the absence of bill Belichick, we have the next best thing in Joe Missoula, not letting these Gen Zers rest on the laurels after a championship coming in, give them something to work for. They haven't won shit. His words, not mine. There's no pressure involved because everyone's going to die. His words, not mine. This is the kind of coach we like in Boston. Whether you like it or not, Bobby, they, he's got a ring on his finger, and they might throw up 63s a game, which you know is not fun to watch, but he's not going to let his guys rest in his laurels. He's going to make these guys work, and we like that. Joey Mass, he's the best guy for the job right now in Boston. Don't listen to McPhee. He had a cookie a little bit later, and his blood sugar's all <laughs> fucked up. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Congratulations, Joey Maz. You figured out how to score when Tom Thibodeau still thinks it's 1995 and literally refused, refused to defend the three-point line. All-time dumbest coaching move by the New York Knicks last night. The difference between Joey Maz and Gerard Mayo is uh, one simple thing. Joey Maz is stacked with a championship roster, while um, Mayo isn't. Uh, they're both morons. Nothing's changed. The hate from... It's no, not going anywhere now. This is what the show does to you, too. The, the spite, uh, you're not going to be, this is how I became the captain of the Mac Jones fan club. You can't take, you're never going to be off to fall off this, off, the, off of this. I don't uh, think I'm wrong with my take. I think oh, you are so fucking wrong. Be, how he can, dare he can, you? If he becomes oh. the winningest basketball coach in like NBA history, he's so young and he's just won an NBA title. Gonna fuck okay. it. He's going to get this like a right. something. It's very hard. He looks crazy. Something's going to happen. He's going to get Oh, yeah. No shit. The way he talks, too. It's just like, dang. It's yeah, extremely no, hard to ever be on Ray's side because he, we take an argument where you said that Joe Missoula, championship of the NBA, is the same as Gerard Mayo, the worst team in the NFL. Very easy argument. Very easy argument for me. And then Ray comes bumbling in, it, talking about the greatest, the most wins of all time by a coach. Like, shut the fuck up, you goddamn bot pod. Bottom of the totem pole of dumb. You're digging a hole for me that I can't get out of. He's not Gerard Mayo. That's Maybe insulting. if you dug a little more, you wouldn't have the beaties. Well, I'll dig a little bit more into your mother's ass later tonight. We're going to talk about uh, Celtics opening night for sure. Pat Scraps, we'll do some Patriots talk. Not, We're not going to start the show uh, with Patriots, as promised. We're going Celtics first. Basketball sure. show. Let's go. Seize. Ten questions from around the NFL and beyond, plus a little bit more down there in that section. Just like one of the race ass. Would you rather from uh, Dr. Pickback and a simplest minds of the week? Welcome to the Sim Mind Sports Show, Friday Rewind, live October 24th. Welcome to the show. Uh, 
the Celtics are dumb front-running pussies. This is the same team they have been for four years running. Well, my worst nightmare came true. Missoula and Mayo are friends. What the fuck? Apparently, they've known each other since Virginia. They have these docking sessions where they talk about ball and managing people. I'm on vacation. I'm going to quay all these. I'm going to fucking watch them this week. Did you say quay? Oh. <laughs> Is it not quay? It's Q. It's Q. <laughs> What happened, Ray? Did you run out of space on your Mac? You had to pull that from whatever fucking VHS tape that was happening. That someone from 1984. Just so did you someone know, someone record that on a shoe. That was, yeah. the, uh, that was Banner that was 14. The, that was Banner 12. Yeah. I don't no. understand how you go from me sending you the exact clip to play at that time to you <laughs> pulling out a fucking clip, a, a recording from 1983. How does that happen? This is. I don't know. Listen, I'm not mad at you because this is the brilliance of the Civil Mind Sports Show. This is what you come here for, okay? Mind numbing fucking stupidity <laughs> with no excuse whatsoever. I have this, no is, excuse. this is this is it. And you know fault. what? It's relatable. It's relatable. I'm <laughs> sure we've got two listeners right now: Hanson Wayne and Patrick. In my opinion, both of them are full on hard R's, but probably statistics says just one. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wrong state. Wrong state. Super fan Patrick Mooney said, I thought I was going to see Larry Bird. Not today. Sorry. <laughs> there they are. Super fans. Handsome Wayne and uh, Patrick Wayne says, I like turtles. So maybe my prediction is correct. That was the perfect, that pretty Patrick. That was the perfect video for our viewing audience tonight, Ray. So thank you for that. Speaking of, of our viewing audience, if you're watching on YouTube, you're welcome. Beautiful this evening, as always. Uh, if you're listening on your preferred podcast platform, please, wherever you're listening or watching, subscribe rate review tell your friends and as always tell your mothers banner 18 boys it's celtic season god thank god i've got my top five takeaways from the celtics opening night i'm gonna give you my first one because i gotta get off my chest because it didn't come out of my i did not piss rage for one night since the first week of the nfl season as the celtics dismantled the knicks in a barrage of three pointers after a emotional heart thumping Dick throbbing a ceremony that put the 18th banner, the league leading 18th banner in the rafters of the TD garden TD bank uh, just busted $3 billion for uh, what did they do, Bobby. They uh, embezzled or you're the banker. I'm unaware of this TD bank scandal. So this is about it. They're all fucking in it together. Yeah, all these all yeah. <laughs> you got his me. pockets are getting heavy over there. Exactly. Over there. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. I've lost yeah. connection. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Oh, bank, bank Bobby over. Oh, Bank Bobby. How have we not come up with wow. Bobby? Well bank. done. Bobby thank the Banker. Very much. Bank. TD, what? Uh, no, it was drug money. It was um, uh, laundry. Yeah, there's they're money laundering laundry. from the mafia. Oh, come on, we all money. We all launder money. Get the fuck out of here. In one way or another. That's Nobody cares uh, about that. Absolutely true. The point I was getting at, I didn't piss rage for a night. How'd you guys uh, just give me your opening thoughts? How much you got to watch it? The game. We'll get into the game. Uh, we've got your, our takeaways here. But just just your general sense of the uh, let's start with the ceremony because I don't have anything from the ceremony. You guys get to uh, 
I watched the ceremony. I watched it with my son. Uh, I was like, you got to watch this. This is very important. You know, he's, he's at that age now he's 12. He loves basketball. He wants to go to a game. I'm I'm like, look at, they're getting their rings. The banners going up. He's like, well, when are they going to fucking start playing? Obviously he didn't swear, but he's like, when are they going to start playing the game? He didn't care. He didn't give two shits, but I'm like, the banner was wrinkly. It was very, it was wrinkled. Yeah. Did anybody look at that before they pulled it out of the box that it came in from Amazon? Like that thing was all wrinkled up. <laughs> the technology uh, yeah. you have to do, you know, like steam cleaner, something to fucking yeah, get it all come out. On. Bob Cousy, KG, Paul Pierce. Ray How Allen. high was Paul Pierce? You think? Oh, constantly high, constantly high. I love how he wears the sunglasses just to hide his red eyes. Yeah, yeah. constantly high, high. And a perma skid mark from Mr. Paul Pierce. We love yeah. him. Anyone that shoots their pants on national TV. Hey, love it. Spitfire question. Better Celtic all time. Right now, today. Paul Pierce, Jason Tatum. Paul Pierce. Jason Tatum. It's Paul Pierce. He owns he's like second in all time scoring. You fucking idiot, right? All right, let's do uh top <laughs> uh top five segment. That was going that was going <laughs> either way, depending <laughs> on Ray's answer. I, I was going. If I said Paul Pierce, you'd be like, you fucking idiot. He's young. Yeah, yeah, he's James Tatum's the guy. He's, you know? he's, 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 he's the best player, player in the Paul NBA. He's, yeah. he's the best player in the NBA. You dumbass. Yeah. 37 points. <laughs> night one. <laughs> Stupid. Speaking of Tatum and the best player in the Celtics history, minus Paul Pierce, depending on Ray's opinion on that day. Tatum's shot is real and it's spectacular. But before we get to that, let, let him follow us up on that banner talk. His speech summed it all up. Man, uh. <laughs> man, this is uh, this is special. Uh, honestly, man, on behalf of me, my teammates, the organization, we couldn't have did it without you last year. Ah, uh, so let's enjoy this moment together. I can honestly say to the best fans in the world. Let's do it again. Good speech, short, to the point, emotional-ish. I say that, Bobby, because you know you know, it came to me today? You know who Jason Tanner reminds me of? He reminds me of Tom Brady when they started to let him do commercials. It's mm. when Tom Brady turned into cheesy, unrelatable, like, who is this fucking guy? He's, you know, Tom Brady has now gone to a point of just like, he's an alien. Yeah. But Jason Tatum's life is scripted. That was not, that was a scripted speech that he, anyone that does public speaking for, you understand your cadences can't be, you know, anticipated. You try to do your natural rhythm a little bit, but that unnatural pause before he said, let's do it again. That was rehearsed. Well, no shit. You want to get the fans going. Well, okay, but like well, yeah, there are there are that. suckers out there that don't believe it's written. Like you know, and and look, I I bought it. I, I still got a little chill from him. I like it. He's a fantastic basketball player. All I'm saying, he's a decent actor right now. If he bumps up his acting skills to as good as his basketball skills, you know, the world's his oyster. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I agree. I think maybe if you put a little bit of time and energy into anything else, he'd be good at it. But clearly, he was full of spite after his Olympic snubbing yeah he came out balls on fire balls of fury and you know a lot was being made in the last week or so uh maybe more that's when i started paying attention to it because you know just to get away from the patriots but certainly in the last week a lot was being made of a shot and the the amount of time he was changing working on his shot and his release and shortening up his release and you hear a lot of this in the nba now we saw Mikel Bridges for the Knicks looks like a, like he's never shot the basketball before. He's a prime <laughs> example of that going the wrong way. Jason Tatum is a prime example of working on your shot in the offseason going the right way. His shot in the post is three point shot specifically in the postseason, but his jump shot and overall the last couple of years, but you know, really in the postseason where it was noticeable significantly down. We have the numbers to back that up, but just by the watching the game, that short release, that first shot from the arc, from the you know elbow arc from the three, that's that did it barely touch net, kind of caught the back of the rim, and the rest of his shots for the rest of the night did that. That we haven't seen that from him in a couple years where a shot looked that pure. And let me just tell you, if he continues that this year, MVP, he's got it. 
and probably another championship. If he shot like that last playoffs, the Celtics win the championship in fucking three games. He shot so poorly. That was the only reason, you know, they lost in the games. So that was a noticeable difference for me right from the jump. You know, first points of the game for the Celtics, all the talk about Jason Tatum, the Olympic shit, the ax, the grinds, he's working on his shot. You know, any question mark about that shot, obviously out the window right now. Anyway, go for it, Ray, your thoughts on his health. It's his health. He's been battling a wrist injury for two plus years. He didn't want to go through the surgery because he didn't want to miss any time. So basically he is now 100% healthy. You can clearly see it, you know, not playing for USA basketball, sitting on the bench will help that out. I mean, you did go through the finals. You did have a long season, but you had the whole summer off pretty much. Your wrist is finally cured. Like he finally is like 100% and you're finally seeing him take that next step into elite level. I think it's all mental. I think he actually legitimately felt embarrassed over the summer. He was a champion and he was treated like a chump. I think he had once he had reached the pinnacle of NBA greatness, he had and then to be treated like he was by basically by Steve Kerr, that it kind of once he got back from there, he kind of really dialed in. And I think he's really more mentally dialed in. I, I think we've always said that he's he's got all the talents in the world. He's clearly like a physical specimen. But I, be, I, I don't rule out health either. That's a good point by Raymond with his wrist. Yeah, I think both things are true. You know, the team as a whole, we, you know, going to Jalen Brown here in a second, but the team as a whole, specifically Brown and Tatum, who were carrying the weight of failed Eastern Conference finals, 2022 finals appearance all last year, they were playing under the pressure and guise of can they get it done when it matters? And now that monkey's off their back and in one game in a one game sample size with 19,000 people behind you and a banner in the rafters that game can go a couple different ways. A lot of times it goes the wrong way for the home team. Hoisting it. These guys came in, whether it's the motivation or the mentality of, you know, we don't have that monkey on our back anymore. We're playing free and loose and, you know, talents shining through either way. Real quick too. Usually it's like a hangover too, with that whole banner ceremony it takes like a half hour, 45 minutes or whatever the hell it is for all those guys to be out there, get your rings, do the pictures, do the speech and all that shit. Usually they come out slow. It's usually a low scoring game, all that kind of stuff, but they came out and they're just like, fuck this. Here we go. Banner 19. Here we go. We know what we got to do now. Let's fucking do it. Yeah. And they made their shots, which is going to be the key for this team moving forward. It was key from last year, front running pussies. We still can kind of stand by that. And they never got pushed. So Let's see if they ever get challenged. You still can stand by Let's see if they ever get challenged. Just real quick to back up the Tatum thing, because I think it's real. I think the shot thing is real. And I think there is a physicality to it, because you could see the change in the release point of the shot. It's quicker. It's at the top. He's not loading up as fast. Those bowed fucking elbows that he has are not loading up as long to get the shot off. Last year, in 2024 playoffs, he shot a 42.7% field goal percentage and 28 percent behind the line his average in the playoffs for last year was 35 and uh he's generally a 35 36 percent three-point shooter overall last night came out 14 of 18 from field goal and 8 of 11 from three-point line if anyone's interested that's 78 percent field goal percentage and 72.7 behind the three he was on fire jesus christ yeah couldn't miss couldn't miss obviously that's like not my field goal percentage with Ray's mother's ass boom there you go 78 percent Generally, I'm 69, but who's the same? Ah, nice. Speaking of uh, asses, let's move on to my second takeaway from uh, opening night here with the Celtics, which goes back to my opening take. Joe Mazzulla, the right kind of crazy for this team. He's the exact guy they need. He had so many fucking hits from the microphone behind the podium. But last week to after the game, even in-game we could pull out. I pulled out a couple of them. This is not in order, but the one that stood out to me was post-game. They asked him about his the ring ceremony. He kissed the floor. He kissed the parquet. He's a Rhode Island guy. He grew up a Boston fan. He's a New England guy. He's a New England He's guy. He's a New England like guy us, you know? in his blood. Bobby hates that about him. He hates everything about him. So he came out. He kissed the parquet in honor of the greats. One of them there in Koozie, KG, everybody, Bird, Russell, we know, we know the story. So he kissed the floor, and then he was asked about it. He was asked about what the floor tasted like, and he asked what it was like to get his ring. This is what he had to say. Two questions. One, what went through your mind when you were handed your ring? And two, what did the court taste like? <laughs> uh, blood. Um, maybe I wish it did. Uh, 
When I got the ring, um, I don't know. This thing's too big. I don't know why is it so big and how I'm never going to wear it. <laughs> but it's cool to have. It's kind of what I thought. Um, yeah, I, I was more fascinated by the banner uh, because, you know, I come in here every uh, afternoon and, and take a look at those, and uh, they represent so much. And so the banner was, was the, the highlight for me because it um, – it represents a lot of things that go into it, and, and uh, the rafters uh, have a life of their own in this building. And so it was that that moment was the coolest. Bobby, your thoughts? God, it would just whenever you ask him a question, and, and the words that come out of his mouth are infuriating. It's it is it's mind numbing sometimes. You could ask him a very simple question, and you get an answer that is not anything what you would want to hear. Are you fucking kidding me? What did the floor taste like? Blood, or at least I wish it did. <laughs> it makes no sense. It makes no sense. If Gerard Mayo said that, if Gerard Mayo went out and – Gerard Mayo would never win out to be a championship. Gerard Mayo would never, never want to taste blood. Brad, you never want to taste blood. Unbelievable. You two are, you two are so uh, – that no one followed now. up on the blood comment is ridiculous. We that's need poor press reporting. Pass. I agree. Yeah, we that's why we need press passes. I'm sorry, Joe. Did you say you wanted the floor to taste like blood? Yeah, the blood of my fucking enemies. Skull, bitch. <laughs> He's like, how don't you respect him for that, Bobby? Like, I know your hatred for him is so high, but you just got to be like, like when you go to kiss your wife goodnight, just be like, roll over. You just probably go, I respect Joe. I respect Joe a little bit. That explains a lot about your lack of sex life. Yeah. Last thing I saw between you and your wife was definitely not a fucking kiss. Slap, slap. The Joe Mazzula factor is between one of two things. He's a little bit Kyrie. I will agree with you. The fact that he's won a championship and a couple of the next things we have to say, he's got Bella Chicken in him. And with no Belichick in town anymore, this is what we got. So hop on board. When asked about the pressure uh, of the season, defending the championship, here was his quote. We're all going to be dead soon. It really doesn't matter anymore. So there's zero pressure. You have an opportunity to carry the organization forward, to double down on the tradition and the history of what this organization has. And what else would you expect than someone expecting you to win all the time? It's not pressure, Missoula said. There's nothing anyone in this circle, as he points to the media, there's nothing anything anyone in the circle can do to me that's going to impact my identity and who I am as a person or a coach. We're either going to win or we're not. And 40 years from now, none of you are invited to my funeral. That's it. <laughs> God, I love that. That's great. I like the funeral thing, but here's the Kyrie. Nothing any of you in the circle is going to impact my identity or me as a person. It's like, all right, dude. Fucking give it a rest. Jesus don't, don't Christ. Don't go on Bobby's side. Do you can't, see? Look at him. Look at him shake no, his he head. Wants, like, he doesn't like it. Oh, he actually God doesn't damn. like Missoula. He's never liked him. I already got him on the don't like Missoula thing a while ago. I like the next thing Joe said. I don't like this, that nothing fucking matters. Like, you guys can't get to us. He plays the media game. Belichick played the media game too, but that was just out of arrogance and and like I'm better than everybody. Joe plays it like in a Kyrie aspect, a spiritual aspect. Like hey, none of this matters, guys. We're here to play basketball. It's all He's good, very baby. Spiritual man. So it's all cool. I go home to my wife's room, and th there are bigger things than basketball. It's like the LeBron. They're big. When he loses, there are bigger things than basketball. When he wins, he's the greatest thing of all time. However, Missoula doesn't do the LeBron when he loses. Everything's okay. Like I do. I truly think. You're right. He might catch a murder rap, like if the Celtics underachieved oh. this year, like mm -hmm. or like some type of assault. You might have that in his history. Go look it up for yourselves. So don't go soft on him, you there's baby. A, there's Unbelievable. A little, there's a little Kyrie going on there. Not here though. Not when he talks about Tatum. The interview asked him. It seems to me that Jason Tatum has to deal with unfair criticism before the the interviewer could finish his sentence. Joe chimed in. Uh, he said, "Gets to deal with bitch." I added that gets to deal with bitch. The interview said, you add the gets, to, gets to deal gets to deal with bitch. The interview said, yeah, a question mark scared for his life. Of course, George response. He gets to deal with it. Motherfucker. It's the ultimate compliment. You know, it's what we talked about. Like, this is what you asked for. You asked to be the best player in the NBA on the best team in the NBA with an opportunity, you know, to be an icon for the league for a long, long time. This is what you asked for. You get to deal with that press with Jason Tatum. And I'm making fun of him for that. But, Bob, you even have to agree with this. As a high lottery pick, always the best player, biggest player, fastest, most athletic, Jason Tatum has been the best player on his team probably his entire life. Very quickly, that type of dookie could have went the other direction in the NBA. 
he needs a guy like like Joe Mazzula, who is goofy and spiritual enough to land that side of the ball, but also tough enough to say, look, stop bitching about dealing with the media. You asked for this, man. You wanted to be the face of the league. This is what comes with it. All the scrutiny and all the praise. So suck it up, buttercup. I agree that he has the player's ears right now, and they, they're out listening to him 100%. He deserves the credit for that because that's true. Last one here, uh, he said, talking about the team, team isn't great. This team, 25 Celtics, we're not a great team. It's not there yet. He told reporters ahead of the season, do we have potential? Yes. The key word is yet. It's very important. Do we have great talent? Yes. Do we have great players? Yes. Do we have a great foundation? Yes. This 24-25 season, is it is it great yet? No, because we haven't been in a game yet. It just takes time, and every season is different. Who does that sound like? Spoiler, Belichick. Belichick. Assuming that you're going to... Do we in the past doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work now. You have to stay open minded to something different. It's a new season. Every season is different. Welcome to the Boston Celtics Belichickian error under Psycho Joe. I like it because you know why? It's fun to watch. It's like a car crash. It's like going through the Daytona that's 500. Basketball. That blows. Yeah. yeah, well, I like it. The <laughs> basketball does blow. 61 attempts in the first game including tying the all-time NBA record for made threes at 29 with nine minutes to go in the game. They substituted their backups in, who went on to miss 13 three-pointers in a row. Bum. And they got booed for it. This is why Boston is incredible. They blow out their number one competition in the East by 30 fucking points, shoot the lights out, 78% from behind the three, and they booed the scrubs for not getting the record. Goddamn right. Goddamn right we did. It was all Bowser and Pritchard's fault. I, you're totally right. I mean, you know, they're not ready for prime time. Jordan clearly. Walsh airballed the shot, I believe. He airballed the three pointer. Oh, it's like, God damn. I mean, Toman shot 13 in a row. They missed at the end but of did that you game. tell? Did you hear who told them to stop shooting threes? I did. Go on. It wasn't fucking Joe Missoula. It was Al Horford. He said, all right, boys, enough. Enough is enough. Just brought the clock. And good on him, too, because that was. <laughs> Hell yeah. A, that was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. It was but. Bad. They saved it with not shooting that last shot and taking the turnover with the 35 mm-hmm. seconds. They saved it. If they just bricked another one, like it took away from the night a little bit anyway, watching those scrubs brick and brick and brick and brick. The whole stadium's ready to erupt with 30 made three pointers. And then they finally were like, it's all right. Like we don't need it. Take it. Take the fucking yeah. ball. Yeah, we don't want it. It's fine. We'll do it again some other night. But it was El Horford's called, not Joey Maz. So win for Bobby there. Yep. Mm, thank you. Real late on this. Let's talk about Jalen Brown, though, okay? We can't do uh, Tatum without Brown. I think that's in their contracts now. Jalen Brown is playing angry. He is yoked and stoked, playing pissed. I wrote a blog on SilverMindSports.com today about the Celtics and this these top five a little bit more in depth and the motivation of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, what's you know, how big it's been made by you know by the media. Jalen Brown went on to say in the Stephen A. Smith interview that we can talk about for a second that Tatum is pissed and he in that interview with Stephen A. Smith he kind of reiterated the things that clearly he was pissed about including the Olympic snub and among other things I don't know how long that's going to last those things that's a hard thing to hold on to for 82 games Mm -hmm. and I don't even know if it impacted them in this game one for Tatum anyway Jalen Brown is on a mission (laughs) he's shrugging Jalen Bronson Brunson off, fucking looking at him on the floor, yoked out of his goddamn mind, playing with as much confidence as possible, holding all the hardware from last year. Someone just called him the best player in the league, a bona fide superstar in the league in the NBA called Jalen Brown the best player in. Oh, uh, Giannis and the Takubo called Jalen Brown the best player in the NBA. So hey, recruiting already. You know, this is already recruiting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that is. I Good got call. Damian Lillard here. It doesn't fucking, he's not doing shit for me. I need Jalen Brown. Jalen, I you're like the best that. Player right. yeah. I like that. Right. As we are like, can we just hear that clip from the Stephen A. Smith interview? And then I'll get your thoughts on uh, Jalen Brown. Somebody that plays in the league that plays with this man as a teammate, all of these years, what was that like? And could you fathom any explanation how you could, as any coach can look at a guy like Jason Tatum and say, beforehand, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find minutes for you in a 40-minute contest. No, nah, for sure. I'm biased when I'm answering this, by the way, totally. Yo, so, sure. <laughs> um, but Jason, I think he handled it extremely well. Uh, like he, you know, that just says a lot about JT's character. Um, but I know he was pissed. No, nah, for sure. I remember texting him 
and being like, you know, like I like I'm mad for you. Like I know what that like I was I mad get for him. It. Like JT, I know how he carries himself and how, you know what I mean? So I know I know like that feeling. Um but I thought he handled it well. I thought he handled it with class. Somebody that played very serious. Very serious. Very serious man, Bobby. Any thoughts on uh Jalen Brown and the motivation that he's got going on? I thought Jalen Brown was actually 100% bought into Missoula ball. I think a lot of times last year, it seemed like he was fighting it kind of off doing his own thing. He was really playing in the flow of it. I thought he was, I, it really seems like he's really kind of bought into the team right now. And he's not just kind of like uh, freelancing. Like it feels like from a basketball standpoint, I saw him drive and create more than in one game that I probably maybe ever seen him do. Do you know what I thought was very weird on the first game? I've always noticed this about the Boston Celtics. They always give Jalen Brown the ball first. Uh, he always has to find his shot. He always has, he always has to get in rhythm. Tuesday night, it wasn't like that. They were like, fuck this. We're just going to go out there and just dominate. Whoever's hot, whoever has the ball, do it. Just dominate and take over. Then tonight, I was watching the Wizards game before we started recording, and it was right back to getting Jalen Brown motivated, like right getting him into the uh, groove of things. Like He was taking all the first shots and all that shit, so – I think the first game was just like, let's just go show the world that we are the world champions and we're going to just ball out. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see if there are adjustments. Missoula's talked about you're either getting better or you're getting worse. So they are doubling down on Missoula ball. They're going to shoot more threes. Derek White is supposed to shoot more threes. I see you smirking, Bobby. Go ahead. You're either first or you're last. I'll take a Ricky Bobby attitude. It's better than Gerard Mayo. <laughs> anything is better than goddamn Gerard <laughs> yeah, Mayo. Uh, yes, anything. So there you go. If you want to see the rest of the top five, again, go to simplemindsports.com for the blogs. Uh, real quick here, Ray, I see a couple uh, comments there. One from uh, Handsome Wayne specifically around. A27? Uh, yeah. Let's just see if we can answer this real quick. Handsome Wayne says, so do you think LeBron got pegged by Diddy or what? Conclusively, yes. Ain't no party like a Diddy party. There's a thing that came out today that I saw on the TikTok. Basically, there's an unnamed athlete that was caught getting pegged or getting fucked on a couch but they're not releasing the name but it was a party that uh, lebron was at so diddy definitely got his butthole diddy going diddy we'll get back to the lakers <laughs> did he touch your butt <laughs> <laughs> did he touch your butt well well we got a little lakers talk uh, a little bit yeah. in further on in the program before that let's throw it over to uh headlines with the obvious word thanks rich we said the Celtics hung banner 18 then hung up an NBA record tying 29 three pointers on the New York Knicks Celtics win 132 109 oh you can unmute yourself apparently Tatum led all scorers with 37 points. Next up, the Washington Wizards as we record and score update. Celtics up 71-59. Checking in on the quest for the butthole tattoo, the Bruins are currently on a two-game losing streak, and my butthole feels great. No clenching here whatsoever. They take on the Dallas Butthole feels great. Damn it, he can unmute himself again. And the Dallas Stars as we record uh, score update, 4-2 Dallas. Speaking of sucky teams, the Patriots traveled to jolly old England and got stomped by the Jacksonville Jaguars, 32-16. The Patriots are officially the worst team in the NFL. Nice job, Robert. And finally, the World Series begins Friday night as the L.A. Dodgers take on the New York Yankees, and Rob Manfred must have a huge erection for this matchup. This has been Headlines with the Obvious One. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response, were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought? Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. God have mercy on your soul. Oh, you still muted. Perhaps, so. uh, speaking of, was I muted? Oh, yeah, when sorry. I called it, I'm not going to repeat it. Um, <clears throat> I made a compliment sorry. to you, Raymond, and I it's in my contract. I Damn it! Twice. Damn it! <laughs> Yeah, I had, a nice, I had a real nice thing to say. Mm. Never hear. That's fine. Pat Scruff, speaking of SimpleMindSports.com, a blog was written-ish by uh, Chief Bobby talking about Gerard Mayo titled, Gerard Mayo's Full of Shit. So go Great check blog. that out, SimpleMindSports.com. <laughs> a lot of people on the Facebook there. got very upset about it. 
Did they? The book, oh, yeah. I, I'm fucking right about that, okay? And I put it out before everybody else said it later that day. The internet is not happy about that. But There's so many. Oh, could, can I just stop? There's a lot of bobos. There's a lot of bobos that if you speak anything negative about the New England Patriots, they get so fucking butthurt and they say, well, "Why don't you go cheer for another team?" Or, you know, I'm a Patriots fan till I die. All right, we're all Patriots fans. But if you see that how bad this organization is being run right now, or for the past four years, like you just gotta wake up and say, "All right, this team is playing like asshole." You are allowed to badmouth an organization if they're playing like shit and they're coach is a dumb fucking twat that doesn't know what he's fucking doing out there so just fucking deal with it fuckers sorry it angered me all week i love an angry bot pod rant uh you get fuckers and uh dumb fucking twat all in one one <laughs> sentence one run on <laughs> sentence from the grammar guru there's a comment there because i had to take a pause because i'm fat <laughs> that's how the grammar guru uses pot commas when he has to pause Yep. And, and that's how you know you got to get a comment or period or the yeah. massive weight loss gallbladder uh, removal. There was a <laughs> fucking shit ton of commas because boy was he oh, heaving, oh. heaving and wheezing through sentences. Now, less so. Speaking of heaving and weaving, I said it was soft down there. Drod Mayo, we know he called his players soft. That's all we heard all week. It was like a reincarnation, a reperformance of Ray in the eighth grade. Soft, 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 soft. But the, coming out of Patriots since then. Yeah, it's been it's been soft on the repercussions as well. The whole thing is soft down there. Listen to these guys talk about Gerard Mayo calling them professional NFL football players soft. What did they have never to say? really been called soft by a coach. You know, I feel like it was kind of a shot at the whole team, not an individual um, in perspective. I know tired of being one and six coming in saying the same stuff every week, so I kind of understand where he coming from. Me, it don't really bother me. Like it's all about what we put on tape. There are plays where a lot of us were playing soft, me included. Since all of us have been in like middle school, we've all had coaches that said a lot worse. So like, that's not really that big of a deal for me. It's got to challenge you. You never want that to be your identity at all. So I think that's a big challenge for all of us. I don't really think anybody took it any type of way. Honestly, I don't think anybody ever heard what he said. Um, and even if they did, they're on to what can we do to play better. Bobby, if Drod Mayo's full of shit, these guys haven't found out yet, apparently. Or they're still molded in the Bill Belichick mindscape that they can't fucking speak anything in front of the mic. It just seems like they don't give a shit. Like, they, they don't seem angry. They don't seem anything. They just want to get the season over, it feels like. They seem like they couldn't be any more bothered by what was going on. And I don't know what Hunter Henry was smirking about, but it seems like he just couldn't wait to get back to some degenerate text group. Yeah, well, that usually is my point of like happiness in life right there. This is just getting back to the text chain. <laughs> Sitting by ourselves in a corner with our pants <laughs> off, texting uh, funny memes back and forth, drunk to our friends. <laughs> That's <laughs> life, man. That's 20, life. 2024, baby. Yeah. Just come quick notes. Barmore had his incident with the police last week or a week or so ago. He has since apologized to the cops and a very good, well, well put apology. Yeah, because his mother's going to beat the shit out of him because she's a cop, apparently. So, yeah, of course, you don't, you don't disrespect a police officer when your mom's a cop. Gay, okay, listen, good football players have good mamas. Christian Barmore, he's off the shit list. Jalen Polk on the shit list under, quote, concussion protocol, quote. I would not expect to see him on the field. Maja Stevenson also limited with a ankle, quote, illness. So we'll see what's going on with him. The other uh, news piece that came out this week regarding around Gerard Mayo, who's full of shit. Last year, Gerard Mayo reportedly was missing team meetings because he was in meetings with Robert Kraft, which did not go well with Bill Belichick, obviously, and a number of people in the building. And if you remember last year when things were spiraling out of control, Bill Belichick firings were rumbling. There were reports that half the building was in on Mayo and kind of half the building was not in on Mayo. And... Ray, you said this last week. You kind of hope the whole thing just falls apart so we or somebody gets traded so we can hear all the tea as the kids pull, pull all that tea. The, tea. Yep. the worst teams get, the more tea you get. So this shit is going to continue to happen if they continue to lose. This is just the beginning of it. Gerard May, they basically quit on last season. Gerard Mayo is already looking forward, missing team meetings on defense so he could talk to Kraft about what they're going to do uh, with Elliot Wolf and uh, completely not doing anything fucking remotely close to productive on the roster this year. So there you go. 
they, he's also blaming Covington now. He's like Covington has full control of the defense. You know, even though it's my game script, it's Covington. What is this me. asshole doing? I don't I see don't him know. walking on the sideline. I don't he's know. clearly he has no he's business point, man. It's finger pointing. I love it. I love it. What? Normally, the way the, the way these sort of things work, the coach calls the team soft. Either the whole thing falls apart completely, or there's a response. Right, the next team they come out and kick the shit out of the next team. Do those players look like they're motivated that we just heard from? No, they don't give a fuck. There's going to be no response. No, they look like they're saying the right thing for their next contract. Is what they look like. No, yeah. they're going to get uh, news. Oh, thank you for reminding me of the bonuses, Ray. Uh, which you didn't remind me of. I reminded myself. Phil Perry has reported that there's a high chance Elliot Wolf and Gerard Mayer are back next year. So I'll Ooh. talk about getting fired a uh, little bit of water on that. What was the other one? Oh, they had a team meeting on Thursday uh, today, this morning that went uh, very, very it? well. Yeah. Yeah. What did they talk about? Everyone has to work harder. Everyone has to be better. Everyone has to just work harder and be better. That oh, wow. was the. That's, that's, that's all it's going to take to win the fucking in the game. And the NFL fucking now, meeting. We don't have time to do this who right led, now. Who led the Who led the meeting, though? I don't know. Probably uh, Jacoby Brissett. Yeah. If you have time to go listen or read to Greg Bedard, any spots that he's done, anything he's written about the defense, specifically the run defense, there's certainly a personnel problem. But he ethers the fucking coaching on that it's team. Terrible man. He eviscerates. His spot he on Thunder Mass was his first five minutes, ten minutes. Bobby, you brought that to our attention. Yep. Go listen to that. He destroys them and gives you details on how bad they are on defense, coaching yeah. specific. He so. does a great job of kind of laying it out in layman's terms too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's finish the uh, pass up segment with what Belichick, Bill Belichick, that is, thinks of Gerard Mayo calling his players soft. Hey, coach, have you ever had a soft team? You know, look, I, I think when you, when you criticize your team publicly like that, uh, it doesn't always go over well. Not every coach has their own style and, and, um, you know, maybe sometimes that can that can be effective and all. But uh, ultimately, I always felt like when the team played bad, that was my responsibility, too. I mean, we might have had bad playing, but we had bad coaching. It led to bad playing. So uh, I think it's always best to kind of, you know, take a look and, at yourself and do what you can do to help the team. And then, you know, if you have constructive criticism as a coach, that's your job. But um, I don't know. You know, last year, the Patriots led the league in, in rushing defense yards per carry. Number one in the league this year, they're. 26th or whatever it is it's the same players i don't think that those players on defense are soft but uh they haven't stopped the run very well this year hey, dick mayo I, I was top five last year you son of a bitch this fucking asshole that i mean um, that was the couch version him on i was a mcafee, McAfee. Uh, oh yeah he went even harder on that uh, everyone's probably heard the the clips by now None of it is necessarily untrue. I will just say, and we've talked about this before in the program, I've written about it on the website, that defense last year and the year before benefited from Bill Belichick playing the let's not get our asses blown off by 30 points from the offensive side of the ball and just managing the game that way. Bill, Gerard Mayo and AVP don't have the luxury to do it. They probably also don't have the skill set to do it. So Bill Belichick's defense was certainly inflated the last couple of years because of that, but there's no fucking chance in hell a Bill Belichick run defense would allow a team to run as ripshaw over them as, as they've done before, unless it was in, intentional. Like we've seen them let the Colts do that before with Peyton Manning, right? Like let the run yeah, be because you want to, you want to take away their best you weapon. Can make a choice the, yeah. yeah. This is not the case here. So <laughs> Belichick firing his shots. I don't blame him. It's, you know, rock bottom here in New England. Okay, let's do uh I'm sorry, we've got a uh comment from Handsome Wayne, super fan Handsome Wayne. Bill's dragging his nuts on Mayo. The fact that we've gone seven weeks with only minimal Mayo puns, and that one being just let's be better. If you're gonna talk about dragging nuts through Mayo on Mayo, there's a mayonnaise joke in there somewhere. Can we get a little mayonnaise mustard fucking ketchup type of thing? Some cheesy cheeky, as Bobby would call it, cheeky joke in there, just, please. Get some cheeky stuff here. Let's get some cheeky mayo. Let's get some cheeky mayo in there. That's what your mother calls it on Tuesday, right? Cheeky mayo. Quick break. 10 questions from the NFL right after this. Diabetes. 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 Thank you, Wilford. Diabetes. 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 Di
<laughs> Thank you, Ray. That was a beautiful PSA from your home home records from you and your family. Ten <laughs> questions from the round of the NFL and beyond. Bobby, uh, lightning round, fire it off. Let's go. Watson tore his Achilles Sunday. Will he ever play for the Browns again? Raymond? Yeah, because he has to because that money is just too much. Oh, I knew you were going to go fucking contract. It's not the contract. Nobody wants him. He sucks. He probably will play. He might be out next year. Achilles, they might just well, yeah, he, he, yeah, he's not playing next year. I, I would think say no. They cut bait. They're, they'll have to eat the money next year, but then they'll cut it from there. They, I don't think you'll ever see him in a uniform again. No, they'll they'll weasel way, their way out of the money somewhere. Should the Pats keep tabs on Vrabel? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> You're gonna look if Mayo gets fired this year. Like that's the first step. Getting uh, convincing somebody to come here and coach this team in this organization. Yeah. That's not an easy task. And if you fire Mayo, you better fire Wolf. So you're starting from scratch. Again. <laughs> yeah, you better keep Frable on your tabs and speed dial and sending him fucking nice roses and chocolate covered strawberries or whatever the hell he likes. He'd be an actual viable candidate that could possibly land. Did the Mayans and Aztecs get it right? Should uh, human sacrifice be on the table with athletic competition? Well, Diddy and those folks are still uh, doing that, so... Because don't they do that out in California with the owl thing? Like, isn't there a big like conspiracy thing with the owls where they? That's the I forget what that's called, Bohemian Grove or whatever. They fake it. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. They don't actually do. We haven't had a spirit oh, they don't. in a long time because Bobby's a slacking. Uh, you know, yeah, he's being a real piece of shit. Government really. gives him all of his the shit, bank. and then he fucking the cries I about it. Land. So we haven't had one of those spirit walks of truth in a long time. Maybe we'll get one of those. That grove thing they fake the sacrifices oh but, so no one sacrificed but they just like would do like a whole like person laying there and they're like how much it better like, would an mlb playoff game be oh. if like each team had to put up like a brother yes of course if things went back to roman gladiator be days, it would be awesome. much more entertaining however our lives would be significantly worse so i'm just gonna go with drink sad beers on the couch Okay, I'm going to go with human sacrifice. Can someone please explain to me why the Bruins would pay this guy $8 million and then put that other bum in who completely sucks? Look it's at like, this fucking guy trying to talk they hockey. Just stand, they just stand there. It's like giving a first baseman a night off. <laughs> Bobby why Bruins do hockey, over here. Why, does, why do hockey player goalies need nights off? I don't get and, it. And that's why I put my butthole on the line because I knew that he wouldn't be able to do it. So that's why. You put your butthole in the line because you're a company man, Ray, and I respect that you had no, no you have no fucking knowledge of hockey like intellect whatsoever. I'm no, the most uh, French Canadian guy here. Bruins are you are the only French Canadian guy here, and unless Bobby's got he's he's got a little bit of cunt in that face, so maybe I bet you one of my ancestors <laughs> fucked one of his ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> but did they plant the seed? Uh, I don't know. Bruins are bad right now. We don't know. Shouldn't have paid that. Shouldn't have paid Swim in the money. And should have brought up Boosie. Give me hot Boosie. You guys can look that up later. Who that is? That's what I call no. Bobby's mom's ass. Yeah, lap. No, that was bad. Should Damn. we adopt a new NFL team for the season since the Pats blow? No, I hate that idea. We tried it once. We did the loser team draft, and I had to vote for Buffalo or Toronto or whatever. It's stuck. You do a Buffalo, doesn't yeah. Work. Doesn't work. You know why? Because we're actual fans. Tell those Facebook morons we are actual fans. It actually is God in our blood. Like God goddamn right. Bobby in the Cherokee, Chief Bobby. It's in our goddamn blood. We can't. These colors don't run, bitch. Okay, I'm not rooting for the fucking Chargers or whatever. No. All right. Tua wants to play. Is it a bad idea? No, he's hey, a dumb dumb. Dumbest motherfucker on the panel? Please. <laughs> <laughs> he can't retire. He can't quit because he won't get paid, so he's smart. He's the smartest man on this panel. Better question. Should Ray wear a guardian cap constantly all day, every day? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, he probably should. Eagles run Saquon for 176. Is that divisional spite at its finest? No, because he sat. He could have had the record, but he didn't want to. He could have had his personal best, but he didn't want to, so he sat. He's a <laughs> gentleman. Yeah, it's sucktitude at its finest, competing with the Patriots. Giants just blow. <laughs> Never mind. The Eagles are pussies. Is Bill Belichick playing the opposite game with Gerard Mayo? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's fantastic. It doesn't I'm, like, I'm here for it. Says. Bill Belichick will say the opposite. The guy that hated the media the most is now on the media, like just telling you he how loves, bad Gerard Mayo is. Like it. He's awesome. starting to enjoy I love it. it. He's ripping I love everybody. It. He ripped the Giants GM. He's ripping Jags. He's ripping the. He's ripping everybody. It's not necessarily the opposite game because Gerard Mayo is wrong at everything, so he's just telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. So it's, hard, yeah. it's hard to tell if it's the opposite game or not. Should plumbers have desks? No, no, no. Oh, this is obvious. 
bitch. Uh, inside joke, Ray sent us something about having a desk. Ray's a plumber, and he said he had a desk, and then he sent us some screen. No, uh, I'll tell you the whole thing. I was internet. I was clutching my butt cheeks because I thought I was gonna shit my pants. I couldn't move, and I was like, "Oh shit, I'm at my desk. I can't move right now because if I move, like, have you ever had to shit so bad that you're just frozen? Like, you just you're no, I'm not a child. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Brandon, are you done for the season? Does that put the 49ers finally done? They were done before it. They got to start over. I don't know if I'd fire Kyle Shanahan. He's still a top coach in the NFL. There's not a lot of them. Oh, but... it's not his fault. No, it's not his fault. There's a lot of injuries. Christian McCaffrey's hurt. Debo uh, Samuels is now He's hurt. Rated. Brandon Ayuk's hurt. I mean, that defense. It's Shanahan's the fault. Sorry to interrupt you, Ray, but it's because we're running late. We got to go. It's Shanahan's fault only in the fact that he will not bring in a bona fide quarterback. If he had. If they just spent the money on Tom Brady the year they went to Tampa, they'd have a Super Bowl ring. He refuses to do it. And injuries are a big part of that. But, you know, at some point, the message runs dry. So they were done before Ayuk, but there's certainly, yeah, I don't know. The, the NFC is wide open. Who knows? I don't, you know, anything could happen. Obviously, it's the NFL, but on paper, I'd say they're done. Agreed. And it, that's it. That's it. Okay. We've got some other stuff here. We're a little bit late. I'll give you the. This is a bonus section from the 10 questions. This is the 11th question, and I'll give you the – I'll let Ray pick. You want to talk MLB as we move into the World Series? Do you want to talk the WNBA, who are a bunch of idiots, or some NBA scraps that we have on the table? WNBA. Okay, fair. WNBA (laughs) doesn't fucking get it. If anyone was unaware, their championship – just ended a dare to go. If anyone was really unaware, they hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Bobby, who won the WNBA championship? I have no clue. Uh, the New York Liberty. The Minnesota <laughs> coach, the Lynx coach, the Lynx played the Liberty. Uh, Liberty won in five games. They have a five game series in their final. So there you go. They also only have 13 teams in the league, which I've been paying attention to WA in a little bit, and I didn't I didn't know they only had 13 teams in the league. And they wonder why they don't fucking make money. The uh sh- <laughs> I don't know why this bugged me so much. People are going to call me misogynistic or chauvinistic or whatever else. It's not that. It's just you don't fucking get it. You didn't get it with the Caitlin Clark thing when she came into the league. Everyone hated her. They did the hazing thing where they beat the shit out of her uh, every game and then finally came around like, oh, she's actually good, really good. They kept her off the Olympic team because she didn't earn it. They just don't understand like you need marketing. You need to be popular to advance your game. This revolves around the money conversation. We have Angel Reese talking about not getting paid enough. She has a seventy-four thousand dollars salary. No, coach keep, Cheryl keep Reeve, who's been the coach of Minnesota Lynx for fifteen years, has four championships in that league. Lost. Here's her quote. This is the whole quote. The whole thing was about refereeing. She blamed losing on the refs, calling it was bullshit. They stole that shit from us. We shouldn't have to overcome so much adversity on, on the refing. They blamed losing the championship on the refs. If that's not as Bush League as you can get, I don't know what is. If any professional men's athlete or coach came out and said what she said, he'd be ethered, like destroyed. You, I, It was crazy to me. That she even that people are even debating whether this is right or wrong. Uh, let me just read this to you because it's amazing. She was bitching about it after game five for losing. The other coach was bitching about it th- throughout the whole series. They were bitching about it the whole goddamn series. And then the loser bitches the most. Let me just read this for a second. Get this uh, on my chest. Newsflash, a bunch of women were complaining. <laughs> we know we could have done things right, but you shouldn't have to overcome to this extent. This shit ain't hard. Officiating is not hard. Actually, officiating is kind of hard in real time. Now we're mansplaining. Beyond the point. (laughs) When someone is being held, be consistent. If you don't want to call holding on one end, don't call it on the other. Be consistent. Every team is asking for that. It just doesn't feel right that you lose a series with that level of discrepancy. We don't have a team that whines and complains and all that stuff. Sometimes it probably hurts us, but we have a star player like Fee. That just, I don't get it. I don't know why she can get held and go to the basket and hit blah, 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 blah. It's tough to swallow. There were 21. This is not her talking. These are the stats. There were 21 fouls called in the links and 17 fouls called in the Liberty in game five. New York held the advantage 25 to eight in free throw attempts. Criticism from the head coaches became a theme of tightly contested finals, which saw two games go to overtime, three decided by three points or fewer. 
And following the Minnesota game three loss, Stewart shot 10 free throws and Collier had four. Reeves said the game is called differently. So she was bitching game three as well for two star players. And game four in Minnesota's victory. So in game three, Minnesota lost. The coast bitched, said that the game is called differently. In game four, the Minnesota won. The other coach, the coach of New York, <laughs> the coach leading the Liberty, Coach Sandy Brundello, sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, said New York, quote, got no calls and the refs need to be fair. <laughs> when Brundello was asked about game five, so now this is the New York coach talking about winning game five to win the championship, the same game that the Minnesota coach is making headlines for how bad she bitched about it. Here's what New York coach said. In game five performance in the wake of Reeves, Stolen from us comment, New York head coach seemed to be jokingly saying, I thought they were pretty fair. <laughs> so you just you just have two coaches bitching the whole time about this goddamn fucking and they don't understand. Like, no one gives a shit. They don't get it. it drives me fucking <laughs> crazy. And then they throw it in her face and want us to watch it and want us to like it. It's like, you want me to accept. This coach bitching about refs and losing the finals? That's not why we watch sports. You got to be fucking kidding me. And then your players are constantly bitching about the money when you lose $10 million year after year after year after year. They're going to lose $50 million this year. And Angel Reese is talking about her salary. Just play the clip because I see a lot of people talking about this clip, but probably have never even seen it about Angel Reese talking about WNBA salary not being able to afford her, her Bills, play this clip. Please. Look at the means. He ain't pays them bills, baby. I just hope y'all know the WNBA don't pay my bills at all. I don't even think that pays one of my bills. <laughs> Literally, I'm trying to think of like my rent for where I stay at. Let me do the math real quick. He might cover that. Yeah, he, covers, like, that. he definitely it, covers that. What is my? I don't even know my salary. Seventy four. Okay. I don't even know my salary. <laughs> Does it? Let me see. The only. <laughs> Yo, I'm living beyond my means. <laughs> it's like. No, my rent is more than that. It's eight thousand. <laughs> I'm living beyond my means, like y'all think, babe. If y'all thought, mm -mm. it's like I don't even know my salary for WBA. A thing. Do that even pay my car note? <laughs> yeah, I think it pays your car note. Yeah, I ain't doing it that thing. Can you play the clip about we're all dumber again? <laughs> Look. The only person that gets in a segment is Angel Reese. She's made a $1.8 million in endorsements because she knows the WNBA can't pay her $8,000 monthly rent bill. $8,000. Okay, so that whole thing just obviously is ludicrous. But she knows what she's doing. She's getting clicks, baby. She's getting clicks. Clickbait, baby. Get... Bobby, Bobby, that's clickbait right there. That's clickbait. And that's yeah. going to get her some money. That's going to get her some endorsement money. This girl knows exactly what she's doing. I'm sorry that your the initial salary for the number seven overall pick in the WNBA draft is seventy four thousand dollars, and the top salary is two hundred fifty thousand dollars. But when your organization loses fifty million a year, how do they not do the math? I don't. I just don't get how they do the math. Math ain't nothing. I don't understand quite why it aggravates me as much as it does. Probably because no one's talking about it like in this fashion. And maybe I'm just being an asshole. But look, I'm rooting for the WNBA. I hope it does great. If people want to watch it and they want to do well, go for it. Go for it. They made $200 million this year. That was a 700% increase from the year before. It went from 60 to 200 million. Thank They're you, getting Caitlin. influxes through TV deals. They're still owned 60% by the NBA who funnels fucking money into that league. So they're still viable. They've got a massive popularity increase with Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. So hopefully it goes in the right direction. And I got two daughters. Hopefully the girls basketball, they got their 14th team coming in two years. They're going up, baby. They're they're rising up. Just shut the fuck up about the goddamn salaries and look at the goddamn math. All right? Jesus. I don't, like, fuck. Someone do, someone do the math. What would Bill Russell making in the 60s and those guys? Compared to now, like when the before the NBA hit off, probably more because they probably are more than thirty four thousand. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next <laughs> one, <laughs> life next isn't one. fair. People hate women. I get that. I don't. I'm just saying it aggravates me when a coach bitches about refereeing. Like rule number one in sports: don't don't blame your loss on the refs. And then you have your star what? players out like, no oh, shit, you're not making money. The the league loses money. Drives me fucking crazy. Anyway, I don't we're know. We're really mad right now. How about I, I have a nice little game that'll calm you down? Would you like to play it? No, we're gonna Please. play Would You Rather after this. 
Fine. Fine, Raymond. Okay. Suck it, Vine. Suck it, because Rich is very upset, so we're going to play a little game of Would You Rather. Let's begin. Would you rather eat pasta with a steak knife or steak with a spoon? Oh, pasta steak knife. What cut is the steak? Uh, we're going to go ribeye. Give me the ribeye. So you're going to eat a ribeye with a spoon? Yeah. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to mash it down with the other side. Very good. Richard? Are you, you're, you're taking that because you'd rather eat ribeye than pasta? Yeah. Yeah, that's Fucking a good loser, dude. That's stupid. Pasta is overrated. Yeah, pasta is fairly overrated. I was more in the logical what would be easier. Uh, but yeah, I'd rather eat steak. Um, yeah, all right. Uh, would you rather switch lives with the teacher you hated the most or the kid you picked on the most? <laughs> Who did we pick on the most so I can be accurate here? <laughs> Apquits. Oh, Apquits. I definitely don't want to be fucking out. <laughs> so whatever, whatever. So you're gonna be uh, Nardone, just going back to your apartment, fucking throwing your. I never. I only. Around? I just. I just coattailed on those jokes. I never. Uh, I never. So had who's that. the teacher you hated the most? I don't remember. I have to think about that. Miss Koch. <laughs> <laughs> I never really had a problem with her. Either. Well, the answer is teacher for sure. Because yeah, really. Yeah. What a depressed life some answer. of those people have, though. No, nah, the teachers are fine. Yeah. They're fine, no, they're fine like, but the ones that we were probably mean to. What do you the most? think of the losers we were dumping on? Went on to fucking be brilliant and like love it, <laughs> like flying their G fives across the Atlantic. Yeah, look at that. Nah, fucking, fucking give me Koch and his fucking Honda Accord. So in like a simple New Hampshire life, that's fine. Bobby, <laughs> teacher, you go teacher. Yeah, I'll go teacher. Yeah. All right. Would you rather, when walking, have to roller skate or wear your shoes on the opposite feet? Give me the shoe on the opposite foot. Yeah, shoes. Roller skating seriously obviously comes with other things like ditty stuff, and I don't want to do that. All right. You, you never heard the ro rollerblade joke, Ray? No. Oh, God damn it. I'm ready whenever you are. No. It's, I All can't right. Do it. 20, after 20, hours? This is after. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stick uh, around for uh, the uh, cold open after show. Uh, would we're you rather? Tell, we're going to tell a rollerblade joke. We're going to tell a homophobic ro rollerblade joke. <laughs> would you rather after every bowel movement wipe back to front or have to take a shower to back clean to front. yourself back to front, back to front. okay I, 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 I wipe back to front occasionally of Fuck. course you do of course you do <laughs> <laughs> shitty Jeez. balls mine <laughs> chief lobby shitty balls <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would you rather use a time machine to go 20 years in the past hold or 20 on, years? In the hold past? on, I'll just fucking walk past that. What are you nuts? <laughs> Why? Why do you wipe back the front? Spirit walk of truth with cheap shitty balls. <laughs> I don't have very messy poos, it's just very easy to get it off. Oh, yeah, we gotta we forget you. Fucking shit like a bunny rabbit. No, no, no. Yeah, he's got little <laughs> shrunken fucking <laughs> almond nuts too. It doesn't even touch him. <laughs> Whoops right through. <laughs> shit. All right. Uh, if Ray walked <laughs> Ray Ray doesn't have the option. He has to take his other hand and hold his balls out of the way. Yeah, I what, balls. either way you're gonna do it. <laughs> Throws him over his shoulder. All right. Uh would you rather <laughs> Use a time machine to go 20 years in the past or 20 years in the future, knowing that you could change one thing and one thing only. It, well, the only Can they changing... go back farther than 20 years. Yeah. All right, good. Then I'll go back 20 years. And... <laughs> I go back 20 years and get an erection. That's what I'd do. Oh, that's nice, right? Well, that's similar to what I'm doing, but it's, it's... I'll, I'll go, to go back in time. How are you going to change things in the future? You can change it. What do you mean, fucking change it? You can change, <laughs> change it. Change it moving change forward it into a future that I future. don't know now. Yeah, tell them that. Tell your own self not to eat that cookie, so you don't get the fucking leg chopped off. <laughs> in the future, that only works from the past. You dumb fuck. That's how time works. It's linear. What do you mean? You can't change things I from the future. Fucking no, man. That's my fucking thing. I was thinking of shit. And I was fucking reading this stuff. 
I was just writing it down. Oh, so this, it down. these aren't even your questions. No, you go. You always go backwards. You go backwards. All right. Would you rather go on vacation with your ex girlfriend, or go on vacation where you spend a week with your wife and family in a prison cell? Wife and family, easy. Yeah, I think so. Like her yeah. family or mine? Doesn't matter. I'd rather do that. No, you, like you'd have to go with your wife and kids in the small ten by ten jail cell for a week. Oh, if I go on this, no vacation. <laughs> 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 nice tropical island but you have to go with your ex-girlfriend or you go with your family into a 10 by 10 jail cell that's fine i can do that which one <laughs> your mother <laughs> uh lastly would you rather lose your sight or lose your hearing sight hearing. ray charles boop, 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 boop. hearing oh. i'd go sight because i'd like to hear rich's mother moan okay simple smiles right after this Oh, back to school, back to school, to prove to dad that I'm not a fool. But I will say, I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, I do have family members with Down syndrome. <laughs> it almost got me up. <laughs> I dodged it, but it nicked me, it nicked me. I'm a bit of a day walker myself. Are you stupid or something? I'm as stupid as a stupid does. Before right, we go any further, hold on. Please hold. Please hold. Okay. We have a comment that I need to throw up here. <laughs> uh, Wayne it's says, Wayne. Uh, I work with someone who wipes back to front, and this has been a debate for years. Does Handsome Wayne, I don't think you work for the state mental institution. <laughs> He's one of the smartest people I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> he goes on handsome Wayne says what's fucked up he's one of the smartest people i've ever met ray super fan handsome wayne also runs in very small circles so that's not saying a whole lot <laughs> simplest minds of the week pizza right off the bat pizza with a side of cocaine here's the headline german pizzeria raided over best-selling pizza order uh best-selling special order this made me laugh Police in Germany say that they have best busted a restaurant that delivered cocaine with one order on its menu after a tip-off earlier this year. It had been one of the best-selling pizzas. No shit. German Pizzeria has been busted after allegedly delivering one of its best dishes to its customary side order of cocaine. Police said the restaurant in West Germany would provide the drug when customers asked for number 40 on the menu. It is not known how much the pizza... Pizzeria charged for the special order. The criminal director, Michael Graf von Maltoki, said it's one of the best selling pizzas. Again, no shit. The pizza police were first tipped off by food inspectors in March when the drug squad officers began observing the restaurant. They buzzed the restaurant's manager's apartment. Then they proceeded to throw a bag of drugs out of the window, which fell right in the arms of another police officer, according to their police department. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I've heard this story before, but it was local. It was in Epping, New Hampshire. It hey, was at a Burger, okay, it was right. at a burger King. Crispy, uh, crispy. Chris, However, I soon reopened the business and continued to sell the number four pizza. It gave investigators okay. the opportunity to look into the supply chain. After several weeks, 150 officers busted an entire drug ring in West Germany, arresting three people, including 22-year-old suspect head of the operation. 22-year-old head of the operation. Good for him. And raided homes and businesses of 12 suspects. I like the fact that the report had and the police headlined the fact that it was the best selling pizza twice. Like, no shit. <laughs> I mean, if you, pizza. To, if you go to Burger King, that's the worst fries ever. So why would you ask for extra crispy? You can just go to McDonald's to get fries. See where I'm going with this? I got I see where you're going with it. Yeah. I uh, just looking for that a little uh little extra mm -mm, bump bump. Or a puff puff, depending puff, on if it's fries or pizza. Just puff puff. Just puff. Fries or pizza. Last one, Florida man arrested for pooping on a possum in public. That says enough. Florida man, uh, <laughs> this is definitely one of those. Uh, Florida man was arrested this time for pooping on a dead possum on a street in Clearwater. We could have stopped Russia. this. Hold on. Before you go any further, we could have stopped this and you could have said, guess where this was from. I could have. Yeah, I should have. Yeah. And I think our immediate answer would have been Florida. Yep. The police report obtained the smoking gun described the scene of the crime in a graphic detail. According to the report, Florida man was observed de defecating on a deceased possum with his pants lowered and high anal region exposed. High anal. 
<laughs> what exactly is the high anal region? I'm not sure. That's where Bobby starts his wipe. Police actually witnessed 45 year old Robert Wilcox while he's taking his dump on. <laughs> This is in the report. Police witnessed 45 year old Robert Wilcox naming him. Oh, man. While of course, he was, his name was Robert. Of course. <laughs> while he was taking a dump on the dead marsupial. The report also stated that he did during rush hour traffic and in plain sight of everyone after being detained and read his rights. Wilcox then denied ever pooping on the dead possum, even told the cop that he doesn't see straight. That was his defense. He doesn't see straight. <laughs> The officer was forced to do some real investigative work to be sure his vision was correct. He went and observed the dead creature for himself. The report states, quote, physical evidence was viewed at the scene, which corroborates the allegations alleged. <laughs> you saw a pile of poo on the possum. It's a tough <laughs> job. Somebody has to do it. Somebody tough. Being a cop in Florida is a tough job. Handsome Wayne has a, says the best that, you know, this was a personal poop attack. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. There you go. Uh, this was in my sports show. Friday Rewind. Thursday Live, t- October 24th. If you want to hang around for the Cold Open After Show, I guess we're going to be doing that. If not, then uh, follow us on all your socials. Rate, subscribe, review, tell your friends, and always tell your mothers. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.